Okay, so welcome to everybody. Um, welcome to our CPR webinar uh, series uh, on political economics uh, that, that I jointly organized together with Sergei Guriev, Helio Serrera, and Ronnie Raisin. Um, so um, our guest star today is Katya Surovskaya. We're very happy to, to have you present here, joint work with Sophie At and Etienne Madinier. Uh, Katya, the floor is all yours. Uh, it's a big pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dominique. Thank you, all the organizers. First, for the organizing this wonderful uh, webinar. I have been a participant on almost all of the sessions, and I learned a lot, and it was very exciting discussion. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, so uh, I would like uh, to start with uh, saying that this is joint work indeed with Safiat from Lyon and Etienne Madinier, who is my student at PEC, and he'll be on the market next year. So if you're looking for bright young scholars to hire, please have a look at him. Maybe you'll be interested. So the uh, work which I'm going to present today is uh, rather new. So it's a really wonderful time to get uh, some feedback. The paper is called Reading Twitter in the Newsroom, How Social Media Affects Traditional Media Reporting of, Confl on Conf of Conflict. Excuse me. And uh, I would like to start with the very simple observation that social media has changed the world around us. And in addition to changing how ordinary people consume and share information, there are a lot of ideas out there that social media has also become a primary source of information for professional journalists. For example, Alan Rusberger, who was uh, the editor of chief of The Guardian uh, back already in 2010 said, increasingly news happens first on Twitter. Even if you are in the news business and have access to wires, the chances are that you'll check out many rumors of breaking news on Twitter first. And in fact, if we look at surveys of journalists, which are done by media scholars, we see that uh, social media platforms are an important, a very important source of information for 56% of US journalists and actually play some role in work for 91 of them. And uh, also there's some uh, text analyses, again, in this literature, which show that uh, journalists often refer to Twitter and Twitter is the most important platform for them. So overall, if we try to summarize the conjectures from media scholars about how social media affects uh, traditional media reporting, one should say that there are several ideas out there. First, and probably the most interesting and important, is that it seems that social media transforms eyewitnesses of uh, some newsworthy events into reporters immediately, which means that first it allows news to be accessed in real time, often informing traditional media journalists well before the news wires, but also, and possibly more, more interestingly, it potentially changes the perception of these news by the public and by the journalists. Also, and it's probably more um, obvious, but also actually quite profound, I would say that social media serves a, an indicator of trends in public opinion and of the demand for news for a particular topic. And therefore journalists who are thinking about which story to cover in a limited time or limited space, they may choose the story which is trending on Twitter rather than the other one which, which doesn't. And of course, on top of that, uh, traditional media use social media as all of us, you know, first to get feedback uh, through comments, but also to uh, use social media to increase the outreach of, of the stories. And what we are going to uh, think about is the two first bullet points out of that uh, slide, which I just showed. In particular, uh, we uh, pose the following research question. How information available on Twitter affects TV reporting of conflicts? And let me be more specific. We estimate whether and how news uh, of Israeli, about Israeli-Palestinian conflict on US TV is affected by the flow of tweets about the conflict which are released from the conflict zone, from Israel and Palestine. And for identification, we exploit exogenous variation in posting on Twitter in Israel and Palestine, which stem from local internet outages. And I will explain what we, they are as we go along. Let me right away tell you what uh, we are finding. At least what are the findings for now? We'll try, we'll try to expand the set of, set of findings as we work more on this project. 
Uh, so we find that an increase in the number of tweets about the conflict in Israel and Palestine causes, and I would like to underline that this is a causal inference, causes larger conflict coverage in the US, both in terms of extensive and intensive margin, and perhaps more importantly, changes both the content and the tonality of conflict coverage. Particularly, it makes TV news more emotional, especially in the presence of Palestinian casualties in the conflict zone. And it makes news more focused on covering what is happening uh, in the conflict zone on the ground and portraying sufferings of civilians and less focus, for example, on the role of US uh, foreign policy aid and things like this. So big issues like that of policy centered uh, around the US. And finally, I would like to conclude with the fact that well, I'll come back to this, but I will pre preview this conclusion now that uh, Palestinians get more coverage as a result of Twitter activity because they suffer larger human losses. This focus on civilians may make that uh, calculation uh, happen, basically. So let me uh, introduce the context a little bit before I uh, pause for, for questions. But if there are some questions, of course, Dominique, feel free uh, to interrupt me. So we focus, first of all, on US TV news. So why do we do this? Well, it is clear that even now, despite the rise of social media, TV uh, remains an important source for news for, for US um, public. And why do we focus on conflict? particularly news around conflict. That's because we expect the social media should affect news coverage of conflict because it is particularly hard to produce news about conflicts for reporters. This is due both to unpredictability of conflict events and for security reasons. It's sometimes not safe to be on the ground. So using information which is received from, from eyewitnesses is, is useful. And finally, the reason why we focus on Israeli-Palestinian conflict is twofold. Twofold. First of all, it's a convenient uh, source of data because this is a long-lasting, comparable and measurable series of newsworthy events. But more profoundly, this is a relevant issue. Why? Because uh, US TV does cover this conflict, particularly unconditional probability of TV coverage during days with uh, deadly attacks is about 37% uh, in our time period. So on top of that, we know that both sides of the conflict uh, are on social media and act are actively present and think of social media policies as important. Let me give you two examples of this. For example, let me quote from Israeli Defense Force spokesman uh, who said, computers and keyboards are weapons. Facebook and Twitter are the battlefields. It is there that we fight each and every day. And uh, example from the other side of the conflict, here is the uh, quote from the Palestinian social media activist awareness campaign. Anyone killed or martyred is to be called civilian from Gaza or Palestine before we talk about his status in jihad or military rank. Don't forget to always add innocent civilian or innocent citizen in, order, uh, in, in your description of those killed by Israeli attacks in Gaza. So indeed, both sides strategically use uh, uh, social media in order to try to portray their side of the story. On top of that, we do know that US TV not only covers the conflict, but actually uses social media in its, in its coverage of Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And here are the two examples of this. On top, uh, there is this footage from YouTube on CNN uh, about the, uh, uh, the ceasefire break. And uh, on the bottom, this is a direct quote from, from IDF Twitter, again by CNN. So here, Protet, let me pause for a second and see if there are any uh, questions. So there is like a first question um, by uh, Renz Aidan Fernandez um, uh, saying, well, is, is the content of Twitter, is it easily accepted? Is it something that where people, I mean, is it something that people would take, take seriously or, or maybe, uh, maybe like a magic bullet or, or, or is it something that people would cast doubt on and not take seriously? Uh, we all know, of course, that uh, uh, there's a, a lot of circulation, circulation of uh, false news uh, on uh, social media, including on Twitter. And uh, 
I'm absolutely sure that uh, journalists are as aware of that as all of us, and we don't, uh, and maybe even more. So I am, I presume that they try to double check as much as possible what they, what they uh, do on uh, uh, with, with this information which they receive from Twitter. But uh, for now, I can't get a more precise answer for this. Okay, and then Shall there's yeah. please. Uh, and then there's a second question by Quentin Galea. Uh, um, so basically, well, doesn't this give a lot of power to to Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook? And by how much their algorithm constantly changing and partly a black box uh, is trustworthy, neutral? So I mean, may those guys be able to manipulate something, uh, avoid abusing their power? That's a very good question, and we definitely should be aware of that of that possibility. But in our context, content, uh, context, uh, I think we sh I would rather postpone this question, this discussion, because it's uh, not clear how one should interpret the findings which we have. But in a way, of course, it is true that uh, there is a lot of power for the uh, for these uh, uh, IT giants. Uh, but at the same time. You know what is happening on Twitter is very uh, decentralized, right? So on the one hand, you, you could say that uh, Twitter has a lot of power. On the other side, on the other hand, you could say that users who had no say at all now can be present on Twitter. For example, ordinary citizens, be that Israelis or Palestinians, may have a voice now which they didn't have before. So on the net, it's very hard to say whether it's more or less power, whether it's more democratizing or more monopoly. So let me, uh, with that, postpone uh, the discussion uh, on this uh, philosophical issue and try to get to where what, what we actually are doing in order for us to be more informed in our philosophical discussion afterwards, okay? So, so what kind of literature are we uh, contributing to? So, uh, for, well, first of all, there's a huge literature on, uh, so on effects of social media, but let me narrow it down to the relationship between social media and traditional media. And there, there is a lot of conjectures from communication media studies, which I summarized briefly in the beginning of the talk. But as far as the rigorous and uh, uh, well-executed empirical study, there's only one paper, which uh, is very closely related to ours. This is a paper by Cajer V. Mazoyer. It was actually presented in the seminar earlier on. Uh, so you must have uh, a video of this recorded somewhere. So uh, that paper shows that online editions of uh, French mainstream media cover stories trending on French Twitter. And uh, uh, this is a, these two papers, what I'm presenting to you, and this one are complementary, and they have uh, individual uh, contributions to the literature. And particularly, let me highlight my own, our contribution, which is that we focus on news on a particular topic, which is conflict, of course, which allows us to go beyond documenting the effect of the extent of coverage and understand how the content of news is affected by Twitter. And on top of that, uh, we, we use novel instruments which we don't require strong identification assumptions. And I would like to uh, try to move on to get, uh, to get to the details. So let me just highlight what the roadmap for the rest of the talk is. So first I will briefly talk about uh, data sources. There are three types of data which we're using. Data on conflict, data on TV coverage, US TV coverage of that conflict and data on tweets. And then I will talk about identification. And there are two sources of identification. One comes from the lightning strikes and the other from internet outages. And with that, when I uh, show you the first stage, I will be able to come to the uh, description of the results. And there are three sets of results, which I would like to highlight. The first set is on the extent of coverage, and the second and the third are, is on emotions and on topics which are covered, provided that there is coverage. All right, so as far as data are concerned, uh, the data on the uh, conflict are very standard. Now they have been used by many, many people and uh, many important papers in the literature. Particularly, it uh, uh, gives us information on the attacks on both sides, uh, deadly attacks on both sides of the conflict for each day. And we know the perpetrator, the number of victims, and so on and so forth. And uh, this is very, very standard uh, type of data. As far as the uh, content of news, US news is concerned, it's less standard, but it's more and more used recently by, by people. So our main uh, 
source of data is the US television news archive. This is the part of internet archive, which from 2009 onwards gives us full transcripts and actually full videos also for all news shows, irrespective of which time of the day they are for the main US channels. Particularly, we have information on ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, PBS, and actually for from starting from a little bit later for Bloomberg. In addition, they also have some information on uh, uh, TV uh, channels which are owned outside uh, by by uh, some companies outside the U.S. And what we do, we use also information on uh, U.S. edition of Al Jazeera, which is the Qatari. Uh, uh, big network, which I'm sure you, you are aware of. So Bloomberg and Al Jazeera start in 2013, others right from the start of this data. We also show robustness uh, only for the extent of coverage using the more traditional Vanderbilt uh, TV media archive. And the reason why it's just a robustness exercise is because it doesn't have the full transcripts. So we cannot do content analysis with these uh, alternative data. So with the television news archive, we actually can do a lot. And uh, we will be very interested to hear your comments about this. First, we identify TV news stories about conflict zone. Uh, particularly, we count keywords, the Israeli, Palestine, and Israel, uh, Gaza. And we make sure that they're used several times within the uh, news segment so that we are sure that this is about the conflict zone. And indeed, it turns out that TV talks about the conflict zone a lot in the US. But we identify 23,000 such uh, news uh, stories. And this is true for all networks. They do cover. Uh, this is information by days, some of the statistics, but of course they cover, they focus on the conflict to a different extent. And we see that Al Jazeera is certainly much more interested in this conflict than the US TV, which we would expect. But there is some differences across different networks, and ABC is much more sort of US centered than, you know, PBS and Fox and CNN are much more sort of outward looking. Uh, uh, news. Of course, you see Al Jazeera is, uh, is different. What's important is that, of course, the news depend on what's happening on the ground. For example, here we see that there is the probability of conflict is much larger uh, if there are casualties on the ground the same day. So with this, let me uh, move to the Twitter data. With the Twitter data, what we did, we scrapped ourselves uh, the original tweets uh, with all all original tweets, it's important I underscore the all here, with keywords Palestine, Israel, and Gaza from the birth of Twitter until this date, uh, April 18, 2016, when Twitter changed uh, the rules and we are not able to scrap all tweets anymore like that, so historically. So that gives us about uh, 50 million tweets, out of which in English uh, there are 35 uh, million tweets with about five and a half million users. So what we do then with these uh, uh, tweets, we first geolocalize them. How do we do this? We actually use self-reported uh, uh, profile of the user. Of course, I can preview the, the questions and uh, um, now that we, we are well aware of the fact that self-reported profi profile may not be true, but that's partly why we use uh, instruments for, for many other reasons as well, but of course we will need to instrument this. So, and the uh, user profile allows us to identify the uh, geolocalize 85% uh, uh, of the tweets, and that's a lot, and the eight, uh, 9%, excuse me, of, of all tweets with the keywords come from the conflict zone out of which about 2 million are from Israel and about a million from Palestine. Then, with all these tweets, we classify whether they are conflict-related or not. Of course, people tweet about all sorts of different things. And uh, we do this with a machine learning algorithm, which performs pretty well, I must say. And interestingly, about half of the tweets from Israel are about conflict, and vast majority of tweets from Palestine are about conflict. You see that the, there are different priorities. Here. And of course, whenever something important going on, you can see this because it's immediately trending on Twitter. So with this, uh, let me maybe pause again to see if there are any questions about the data, because I want to proceed now to, to our empirical strategy. So maybe given that there are quite a few questions, I'll try to summarize them a bit. So, so there were a set of questions that would uh, look at the uh, 
the demand for taking news uh, from Twitter for from uh, for, for uh, big media houses. So one was like, is there like a substitution effect? So, so with uh, when there are more valuable news to cover, like World Championship or something, do you rely more on tweet? Another one was like, uh, is there a, a bias in terms of uh, yeah, if there is more uh, reliable information available, would you would you maybe less use tweet? And the third one was uh, about uh, financial considerations. Uh, tweet, uh, uh, Twitter is kind of a cheap way of information. Uh, may that also kind of, uh, you know, uh, some, some places that are cash uh, constrained may more often use Twitter. So, so these are like a, a set of, of questions on that. And there was a question on external validity with respect to what would happen if you wanted to look at other countries. All right, these are very different questions. And let me just, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, say that about news pressure, we didn't look at the interaction. Well, I haven't presented you the main specification even yet or identification, but we'll get there. But the, the important thing is that we, we should uh, uh, think about the fact uh, that uh, news pressure affects both the tweets and the, the uh, uh, and the TV coverage. But uh, as far as interactions are concerned, I don't know what will happen and I don't really have a theory. But then, you know, there is a bunch of questions about the incentives uh, to uh, use uh, Twitter for, for, the, uh, for the journalists and, uh, the, uh, and uh, uh, whether uh, people want to, well, and, and su supply demand essentially story. So, so these are very important questions. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, as far as the uh, reliability of uh, information on Twitter, I should say that, uh, you know, if there are some other information sources available, which are more reliable, we, you know, I'm sure that, that as we're gonna see uh, the journalists use these informations, particularly the most important information on news wires. However, the uh, news wires give you, as far as I understand, a, a very, very uh, not colorful events. Whereas uh, what you can uh, use and what journalists I think use Twitter for, they try to add some meat to the bones which they see from news wires using the information from Twitter. But again, I think uh, it would be good to uh, proceed a little further with some of the results in order to try to uh, explain, uh, you know, tr try to see some of these uh, uh, questions. And as far as external validity is concerned, well, uh, there are there are two points which I want to highlight right away, maybe about this. So on the one hand, Israeli-Palestinian conflict is special, and of course, U.S. has a very very special attitude to that to attitude to that conflict. I think we need to see our results in light of that uh, uh, of that um, important premise. And I'll come back to them when I get a chance to present results. And then we see how much of it uh, uh, could be interpreted and in what way, all right? So what we want to do is uh, to explain what happens on TV in the US regarding coverage of Israeli-Palestinian conflict and, uh, and uh, directly explain it with the number of tweets which are coming from the conflict zone. We, of course, need to control for what's happening in the conflict zone and for all sorts of seasonality and, and so on and so forth, which we do. But then the most important problem is that we need to face the indigeneity of uh, the, the, the uh, number of tweets. And of course, there is both reverse causality, which, which stems from the fact that US TV content may drive tweet activity in Israel and Palestine, but also there is plenty of omitted variables. The unobservable newsworthiness of attack may drive tweeting and may drive coverage uh, of uh, these attacks. And also other important events may crowd out both uh, Twitter and uh, the, uh, the coverage by TV. And of course, we control for all observable characteristics of the events, but that's not enough. And on top of that, we instrument the flow of tweets with lightning strikes and internet outages. And let me uh, uh, get to this uh, and try to be uh, efficient in how I present this. So first, 
a lot of engineers basically have pointed out, and nobody uh, argues with that, that lightnings create electrostatic dischargers uh, during thunderstorms, which uh, lead to infrastructure damages, internet con connectivity disruptions, and therefore they reduce the user ability to connect to internet and to produce tweets. And that's of course, given that there is no power surge protection. And what we do, we use lightning strikes in the conflict zone outside the deserts where people live to instrument for the number of tweets from the conflict zone and we control for seasonality, strength of uh, local weather, which is very important because both seasonality is important for lightning and, and the weather affects how lightnings uh, affect the ICT infrastructure. And it turns out that there's plenty of lightnings uh, in, in, in the conflict zone. So we can, we can use these variations. And the second instrument uh, is uh, 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 coming from, from uh, the methodology develop, de developed by computer scientists, uh, which measure local outages by essentially uh, measuring how much traffic there is uh, between the conflict zone and the rest of the, of, the, of the world. In particular, one should say that there is normally a lot of traffic because there is always some uh, activity which is not related to humans on the internet. So there's, if there is uh, some uh, drop in traffic between Israel and Palestine and the rest of the world, that means that there is some kind of out, uh, outage of the internet. And that's exactly what we use for the second instrument. And in order to see, to verify the validity of this instrument, we look at the activity of a Islamic uh, prayer bot which is located in Gaza, which is a machine, which basically informs uh, Muslims about the times of prayer. And we uh, verify that uh, uh, when this prayer is supposed to, uh, prayer bot is supposed to tweet and it doesn't, uh, that's significantly related both to the lightning and to the internet outages, which uh, essentially tells us that our instruments have bite. And here is the illustration of the first stage. So on the horizontal, on, on the vertical axis, we have the number of uh, daily tweets about the conflict from conflict zone. And uh, we compare the days with and without, with and without lightning and with and without outage. And we see that uh, 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 Lightning uh, in instrument uh, has bite, but it has much less bite than internet outage. And that's not surprising because uh, lightning strikes could have a bite only if you do not have power, uh, power surge protection. Whereas internet outages are affect your ability to tweet even if you have power surge protection, but it doesn't affect your ability to tweet, for example, if you have a, a satellite uh, um, uh, satellite uh, connection to the internet. It's worth also noting that unfortunately the net outages instrument is only for the for half of the sample. We don't have it for the full sample. And this is why we see overall increase in tweet uh, in tweeting activity. Twitter has been expanding. So there's a lot more tweets towards the end of our sample than overall. So with this, uh, let me uh, give you uh, two other uh, important uh, checks which we do on our uh, uh, inst instrumental in, on our instruments. First, of course, uh, we need to have a situation in which lightning strikes and internet outages are not related to newsworthy attacks. Of course, lightnings are not related, but as far as out out internet outages, it's not clear because in principle, theoretically, one could imagine that Israel could pull a plug and, and completely uh, isolate uh, the conflict zone from the rest of the world. So they certainly have the technology to do this. And as far as the uh, observable uh, characteristics of the attacks, we don't have the, um, uh, any, any correlation between our instruments and, and what's happening on the ground. I will come back to this possibility that Israel pulls the plug when I, uh, when I present the results. So the second important uh, validity check on our instrument is the following, that what we need is that instrument affects the ability of uh, people in the local uh, conflict zone access social media, but at the same time, it shouldn't affect the journalists ability to get information about conflict from other sources. 
And indeed, this is what we find. We collected information on the news wires from the main news wire agencies, uh, news, news agencies, Agence France Press, Reuters, and uh, Associated Press. And we see that uh, neither lightning nor out internet outages correlated with the news wires. Uh, of course, we are counting only news wires on the conflict, uh, but they are correlated with, uh, with uh, the tweets which of course confirms the, our assumption about the validity of the, of the instruments. So with this, uh, let me pause for a second and see if there are any questions, particularly on the instrument before I move to the results. Um, so so there, there, there are, there's one question on the data source for the lightnings, and then there are two questions on whether they could be created uh, artificially, uh, like uh, strategically, which is something that you, you have right now talked about it, but maybe you want to elaborate more. Uh, and then, then there's a point saying that the FSTAT is really low uh, for several models. Uh, another point. Low FSTAT. Yeah. Well, you know, here's here's FSTAT. Uh, it's uh, uh, I uh, well, it depends. It depends. Uh, you know what's what's your uh, threshold? If threshold is is ten, uh, it's uh, we're okay. And I will present some of the results uh, actually with the uh, uh, confidence intervals corrected for the weak instruments. But for most of the time, we're fine with the uh, with the power of the instrument. Now, what the uh, the source of the data on lightning? This is so-called WWLN. This is the all the list of all lightnings from clouds to land across the globe. And we know exact location and exact time of each of these lightnings. And uh, uh, I don't remember the exact source, but you can, you can find it, for example, for in the other paper, which uh, we wrote with Sergey, for example, on 3G and confidence in government. So that's the same source. It's, uh, uh, standard source of uh, these data. So then uh, there was a question about, you know, the strategic uh, manipulation of uh, lightnings and outages. And uh, here, let me first uh, present the results and then I'll come back to you uh, with this. So let me just illustrate the reduced form. So if you look, and, and as I told you, there are three uh, sets of outcomes. So let's first talk about extent of coverage, which is probably the uh, least interesting, but uh, at the same time also, you know, very important before we can move on to the, to the conflict coverage. And, it, you know, here we have a perfect prediction. We expe expect more coverage if there is if there is a Twitter. And indeed, this is what we find. So this is a reduced form. Uh, we look at here prime time coverage, news length, uh, number of news stories and, uh, and conflict related keywords generally on coverage. And we see uh, the uh, pattern which is reproducing itself irrespective of which outcome we're, we're looking at. And let me uh, tell you right away that uh, this pattern, so what I showed you with the reduced form, this is just, you know, summary of the data, if you like. And uh, what we see here is that this pattern survives controlling for a bunch of things, uh, particularly the, uh, what's happening uh, in the conflict zone and also news pressure. And uh, here I will, pre I present the uh, outcome, the prime time TV coverage. So these are OLS regressions. These are reduced form regressions, and these are the, the, uh, the second stage of the two stages of the square. So as far as power of the instrument is concerned, it's, uh, it's decent, you know, if we, if you, if we take uh, uh, F stat of 10 as, as, as a threshold. So what we see here is that uh, we see that uh, uh, Twitter causes the increase in prime time coverage of the conflict. We also see that the length overall length of uh, uh, time which each network on average talks about the conflict increases and uh, the number of TV stories which are aired, aired during the day also increases. So here I would like to uh, just draw your attention to the magnitudes of the coefficients. Uh, in particular, we see Oh yes, so before we, I do that, let me, let me also show you that the number of stories and length are increasing significantly with Twitter conditional on coverage. So it's not just about whether you cover or not, but even if you cover, you cover 
uh, more when, when, once the Twitter is not uh, muted. So what we see is that IV estimates are much higher than OLS estimates. And uh, there are two possibilities uh, to explain this. One is uh, certainly measurement error from misspecification of tweets content and tweets location. But also, and pro probably more importantly, uh, uh, we, we think that there must be some heterogeneity of the effect. And IV in this case estimates a local average treatment effect on compliers. So who are the compliers? So the US TV coverage is likely to be more affected by tweets from users who do not power search protection or satellite internet. So in other words, normal regular people, regular people who may be just eyewitnessing the, the events. And in fact, we indeed expect these results to be higher. So the, the second point is about uh, the um, uh, relative uh, importance of the uh, magnitude or relative magnitude of the estimates with the uh, lightning and outages. For lightning, uh, the uh, effects are stronger and Time period differences explain some of it, but not all. The most important points I want to say here, make here, is that, of course, local average treatment effect here matters as well, because compliers are different with the two IVs, because you know users are affected by lightnings if they do not have power surge protection, and by outages irrespective of power surge protection if they do, do not have satellite internet. So, so this again changes the group of people who could affect internet. And finally, about, I come back to the question about strategic manipulation. Of course, Israel could pull a plug and maybe they even can uh, do something to uh, cause lightning strikes. Uh, so if so, let's think about when they would do this. Particularly, one should uh, probably, uh, one could make an argument that they would want to disrupt uh, the internet connections when there are some kind of newsworthy events. For example, you know, let's say Palestinian protests, because we don't have data on Palestinian protests. We do, we do have data on, on uh, what, uh, what's happening with the uh, casualties, but we don't have data on protests. And that would be one of the things potentially which Israel would want to, uh, to hide, for example. But if that's the case, then that would bias IV estimates against finding the effect. And this is maybe also explaining why outage IV and lightning IV have different magnitude because it's more likely that Israel can pull the plug than, than that they orchestrate the lightnings uh, in order to, it's much easier to do this, right? So, however, it's very important to note that normally for most places, the silencing of social media when, for example, there are protests is done by jamming rather than pulling a plug, because pulling a plug actually is very disruptive for many other reasons. And jamming is associated with higher traffic rather than lower traffic, which would not affect our instrument after all. All right, so with this, let me try to move on because I would like to present the most important part of, the, of our analysis on emotions and on topics. But before I do this, let me show you the heterogeneity uh, uh, by networks. By, and particularly here, we don't see much of the heterogeneity. Here, the networks are sorted from con more conservative to liberal, and we put Al Jazeera here as a, as a benchmark, which we don't include in our main uh, specifications. And I'm going to show you that for topics and emotions, actually, there's more interesting heterogeneity which we, th than what we see here on, on uh, just extent of coverage. So with this, let me uh, come to the um, question of, so we know that Twitter helps uh, uh, or increases coverage of Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But the question then is, so does it change uh, the way US TV talks about the conflict provided that there is coverage? In order to do this, we first uh, built a two measures of uh, emotional content. So we use sentiment and emotions lexicons, uh, which essentially do the following. For each word in a very large set of words, uh, uh, there is a score between zero and one, which was uh, basically jointly developed. This, this methodology was jointly developed by linguists, psychologists, and, and computer scientists. And uh, uh, there are basic emotions like anger, fear, sadness, and disgust, disgust, which are negative emotions, joy and trust, which are positive emotions, and anticipation and surprise, which are, let's say, uh, emotions which are hard to color in terms of negative or, or positive. 
And uh, all, all of these associations are, all of these rankings are defined, de derived from human rankings of associations between words and emotions. And what we do, we do exactly what is standard in the literature, which sum the emotion scores uh, and divide them by the number of words uh, for each conflict related news story. So it's just the, the uh, and we can do that overall for all emotions or by, by uh, type of emotion. And we also do something which is more sophisticated, which is also now pretty standard in the literature, which is called contextual sentiment, which is a score for, for each conflict related news story that takes into account not only these words, but also the de degree modifiers like very or not very, contrasting sentences and negations. And then what we do with these uh, measures, which are available for each news story, we built an indices of emotions and sentiments for each day times network, taking the maximum across all news stories for each network each day. Why we are doing this? Because sometimes they summarize what they're gonna talk about and then it's completely unemotional. So we want to look for emotions where we expect to see some emotions. So we, we look at the most emotional broadcast uh, out of uh, uh, what's available. And here, uh, here's the reduced form. Uh, it, it's important, however, that given that now we are only looking at the subset of data where which, which covers the oh, subset of data on, on TV, on US TV, which covers conflict, we have a few observations, so we can only rely on the lightning instrument because it's for a longer period of time. And indeed, we see already with the reduced form that negative emotions seem to be much higher when there are no, no, there's no lightning. There's something on joy as well, but on trust, there's nothing. And indeed, it turns out that this is also robust to including uh, the uh, wide range of uh, controls. In particular, what we see here, and this is highlighted in the first column of this table, here we look at the mean of all emotions. We do not pick the ones which, which bite. We take all or the ones negative, positive, and neutral, take the mean out of them, and we see that this is a second stage, and the F stat is, is okay. So we see that uh, tweet, uh, tweeting, Cause, uh, causes, tweeting in the conflict zone, causes the US TV broadcast to be more emotional. Interestingly so, if we look at the direct effect of uh, Palestinian and Israeli deaths, we see, and it's unrelated to Twitter, we see that when there are Israeli deaths, that makes uh, the TV broadcast more, more emotional, but not so the, uh, it's not the case for the Palestinian uh, deaths. We also see, so this is by, for all emotions, but we also can look at each of the negative emotions and we see results here and they're similar to the old. old. Uh, but if we look at the positive emotions, we see positive effects, which are imprecise and the same for the, uh, for the anticipation surprise. But overall, we can't say that this is uh, uh, zero. These are impre uh, imprecise, let's say. So the, the main takeaway is that this is true for uh, all emotions and for negative emotions, but we can't say much more than that. However, interestingly so, and that's what's shown in this uh, table, we see that almost all of the effect on the emotions comes from the interaction between uh, tweets and uh, Palestinian deaths. In other words, when there are Palestinian deaths, Twitter makes the broadcast in the US more emotional. That's what we see here for all of these outcomes apart from disgust. The disgust, it's uh, Twitter irrespective of the, of the uh, victims of, the, of what's happening on the ground makes the broadcast more emotional. Interestingly, interestingly so, when we look at the interaction between conflicts, uh, tweets and Israeli deaths, we don't see that effect at all. Remember, I mentioned to you that uh, US TV is very emotional about covering Israeli victims irrespective of the Twitter. So that actually already he, he, a little bit hints to the question which was asked earlier about, you know, about the power of what's happening, who is, who is given a voice here. So we, we, we clearly see that it does affect the coverage when there is something happening to Palestinians. 
which are, I must say, you know, uh, let's say a, a, an underdog in this conflict defined by the number of uh, the, the human death toll, let's say. And I'll come back to this issue uh, in the discussion. So let me try to speed up a little bit because I know that uh, uh, time is ticking, but I, I still have uh, some time. And, and uh, I just would like to tell you that exactly the same results, which I described to you with just the counts on emotions, of course, divided by the, sh by the, by the number of words, we get for the negative contextual sentiment. Again, on average, Twitter makes uh, uh, the broadcast more emotional. And it's all per Palestinian death. And the Israeli deaths uh, are not, uh, not affecting these uh, effect of conflict uh, tweets on US TV. And we find absolutely nothing on the positive uh, contextual uh, sentiment. And uh, just to uh, finish up with this uh, uh, presentation of the emotions, here we actually do see some heterogeneity by uh, ideology, particularly if we sort the uh, uh, TV uh, channels by, by from conservative to liberal ideology, we see that there is more effect on uh, uh, more conservative, uh, uh, conservative channels. Interestingly so, for example, PBS, which is the most liberal, it is not, it's, it's, we remember the, the fact that they cover conflict is affected by, uh, by Twitter, but the tonality isn't. Whereas it's not the case for the more, for the more conservative uh, channels. Here, we can also look at our benchmark of Al Jazeera. And it's important that Twitter doesn't, doesn't change emotionality or emotion level of their uh, broadcast. However, it's important to understand that on average, Al Jazeera is much more emotional when they co cover the conflict compared to the US TV, which one should expect. So with this, let me pause here and see if there are any questions to, uh, about emotions before I come to the presentation of what they actually talk about. Okay, uh, yeah, there are quite a few questions. So I'll again try to summarize them a bit. Uh, first question is like, um, is there actually extra coverage from, from, does this extra coverage from Twitter actually increase information? Do we have more information or is it just like some substitute? Second set of questions are about, uh, can there be information leakages or trolls or something uh, from outside Palestine and Israel that are not affected by outra, um, you know, uh, outreaches? Uh, uh, then another question on, um, May it be that more tweets means on average more video footage and kind of more meat on the bone for TV. So can we distinguish between written and video messages? And the last uh, question was a set of questions were on, um, you know, given that the events last for longer than one day, um, would it make sense to maybe have lags in the left-hand side variable or right-hand side variable? And... Uh, Yeah. All right. Uh, so, 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 right. Uh, so there are there are two related questions about you know this is a fundamental question whether we can conclude that uh, uh, U.S. Uh, becomes more or more informed after after this effect of Twitter. I cannot uh, positively assert that, but uh, uh, because I don't really have a way to to uh, to measure this uh, for now. However, uh, uh, we, we definitely, and I'm going to show this uh, when, we, when we discuss topics, we definitely see what kind of topics, what kind of words they hear more about. So the question, therefore, is whether uh, US public uh, is interested in these topics or not. Of course, given that this is trending on Twitter, we might expect that uh, uh, US public is interested in this, in this topics, so whether it's good or not, again, you know, it's very hard to say. Uh, however, uh, I will come back to this issue a little bit later. So there's an excellent question about the video footage. And uh, this is exactly my prior, that in fact, you know, they, so this journalists certainly know the basic information of what's going on as far as the newsworthy events on the ground, 
But given that we are talking about TV, it's particularly important for a journalist to have a picture, to have some kind of footage, something interesting to show. And I think Twitter helps them a lot in this. However, this is only conjecture. So far, we are not able to, um, uh, to uh, analyze videos. So the videos are in the, in the data and uh, potentially, I guess we, we, we could try to, uh, to figure out how to do this. So I can tell you right away that I have considered the possibility of hiring somebody to, to hand code these and there are too many of them. So that's impossible. So we're gonna have to, or it's very expensive. It's not expo impossible, but it's hard. But uh, we, we will try to figure out if we can do something with the machine learning and video analysis of videos. But you're absolutely right, you know, the, the person who asked that question that probably, you know, what Twitter does, it makes these, uh, this information about conflict more uh, presentable on TV, which probably means that uh, the US TV journalists decide to go uh, in, in, to decide in favor of showing these pictures. So then there was another question on the, um, uh, on the timing, uh, of course, I have this paper with uh, uh, Ruben Durante, or, which shows that uh, there is a very different TV coverage of Israeli-Palestinian conflict on the first and on the second day. It is true that uh, the conflict events are covered both on the first and on the second day. And in principle, one could argue that Twitter may have made this uh, coverage faster just because we know that you know, uh, journalists get these pictures faster now through Twitter before in order to get some footage, they had to, they had to go to the place where the event happened and, and film it and so on and so forth. And uh, so far we are unable to pin it down very well. However, I could tell you that our results are robust if we look at lags and if we look at coverage of today and tomorrow and, and, and yesterday, and our results are a little bit more precise if we just look at the today's broadcast. Because, you know, the, the, the reason why we haven't done it yet of trying to pin down the, the timing is because we uh, would like first to understand uh, how content of this coverage is affected when it's very, very fast. Because we do know that every all journalists who are surveyed, who are asked about this, are saying that Twitter is good because it's so fast, because we get all this information and we immediately can use it. So that's why we're looking at this uh, 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 relationship uh, without lags so far. However, we will try to come back to it to try to see if we can uh, we can say something more specific on this. So then there was a question about trolls outside. Of course, there are trolls. Uh, the, the very important thing here is that our identification strategy is such that we are sure we are talking about the effect of social media from the conflict zone. So there are a lot of imposters who say that I'm tweeting from Israel or Palestine, but they cannot be aff affected by our, tweet, uh, by our instrument. Uh, right, so with this, let me uh, uh, come to the third and final for now uh, um, uh, set of outcomes. And I really hope that one day I will be able to uh, give you results on analysis of videos, but for, for now we don't have them. Uh, these are about, uh, the, 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 this uh, third um, set of outcomes is about uh, trying to analyze the transcripts of these uh, uh, conflict related news uh, to try to understand how Twitter affects the topics which are covered by, uh, uh, by the US TV. And uh, uh, here is just an illustration for a few topics which we talk about, uh, civilian casualties, hospitals, ammunition, which is basically exact arm which was used. Uh, Hamas uh, is used a lot. And at the same time, we also see that uh, the US officials, and let me name it right away, which officials we're talking about. This will, these are Obama, Biden, uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton, and uh, Secretary Kerry. Uh, and also foreign aid is, is mentioned a lot less. And uh, I, will, I will show you the results 
now with this. And again, so this is just basically a little preview of what we see in the data where we properly control for all, this, all these uh, um, other covariates. So first, uh, what we see is uh, that if we just count the number of times the uh, journalists on TV talk about civilians, citizens, people, of course, we, we look at, uh, at this as a share of all words which they, uh, which, uh, which they use in, in the, during the conflict-related news stories, we see that with Twitter, there is more coverage of uh, civilians and citizens. And particularly, this is also true for civilians uh, suffering. And we have this set of uh, group of uh, keywords on civilian suffering. Uh, interestingly so, when we, when we talk about civilian suffering, we particularly see that this is true when there's some suffering going on. And we, of course, know what's going on on the ground from our, from our data. And uh, generally, on citizens and civilians, it's not necessarily related to, to victims. Second, uh, if we, uh, we also uh, look at the overall uh, uh, talk about uh, all sorts of violence, hospitals, we see that this kind of talk is increased relative to other topics when there are Palestinian casualties and uh, nothing overall and nothing for Israeli casualties. However, when we talk about exact arm used or when US TV, TV talks about it, it is directly the, affected by Twitter if there are some casualties on the ground. Furthermore, we see that uh, when, when Twitter is present when it's not uh, blacked out by the lightnings, uh, we see that there is a lot more coverage of significantly more coverage of uh, talks about either long-term solution or at least short-term solution. So there is clearly more urgency, which seems to be uh, showing up because of the Twitter in these, in these broadcasts. Finally, I would like to also show you that irrespective of what's happening as far as the uh, casualties in the conflict is concerned, Twitter certainly makes US TV uh, uh, mention Hamas and uh, terrorists more. And here it's very important that both Hamas and IDF, uh, of course, have Twitter accounts and they tweet a lot. And this is sort of IDF probably tweets a lot about terrorists and Hamas, uh, and actually IDF also probably tweets about Hamas a lot. So, so all of this, uh, this is not as surprising as the, as, the, as the previous results, let's say, or maybe less profound. However, they're there. So it's important uh, check. So, uh, so then the question then is, okay, they focus more on civilians, on suffering, on, on exact uh, arm, or let's say details of what's going on on the ground. So what do they cover less? And here we see that the US officials are certainly significantly less covered. The uh, topics on aid, let, let it be foreign, military, uh, financial, uh, humanitarian aid is, is covered less. And interestingly, also, there's a very strong effect on uh, the uh, Iron Dome, and, which is the Israeli defense system. However, that effect is only there when there are no Israeli deaths. When there are Israeli deaths, Twitter actually, you know, is, with Twitter, US TV talks more about aid and more about Israeli defense system. But it's not the case overall or with Palestinians. So another thing to mention, of course, that in contrast to US officials, of course, Israeli and Palestinian officials are mentioned more on Twitter, more on, U more on the US TV when there is Twitter, but that's not surprising because they, they, they tweet, they, they want to be heard, okay? With this, I know that I need to wrap up. So let me just very, very quickly uh, show you uh, this uh, results by network. And we see here that there is uh, little heterogeneity in terms of uh, conservative versus liberal, uh, liberal ideology, apart from a pretty interesting effect on or absence of the effect for PBS. So again, PBS is not uh, is not affected. The content 
the length is affected, but the content is not affected. At least we have not been able to de detect in what in what way. And uh, this is very similar to Al Jazeera. So, in, you know, when we think about the effect of Twitter on US TV, the liberal um, uh, liberal TV looks a little bit more like Al Jazeera than than let's say the conservative TV here. That's what we what we see. However, uh, maybe it's worth uh, noting that, of course, Al Jazeera uh, talks very little about U.S. officials and talks a lot about about these uh, these uh, topics, uh, irrespective of whether Twitter is present. Uh, so. Uh, here I would like to ask Dominique if I have uh, another two minutes to uh, uh, wrap up. Would you give me, and then we'll open no, no, the sure. discussion. No, no, of course, of course, you've answered so many questions. Please, please go ahead. Thank you very much. It's very, very kind of you. So, uh, let me uh, just try to uh, uh, interpret what what we see in the following way. Uh, so. What we what we know, and we can we can, I can show you a regression. Oops, I, I wanted to show you a regression, but I couldn't. So let me just uh, walk through uh, this. So we know that a, as a result of having no lightning bl blackout, the probability that U.S. TV mentions civilian casualties increases by six percentage points with each additional Israeli victim, and by two point five percentage points with each additional Palestinian victim. So let me try to see, maybe I can uh, put, uh, show you this table. So this is the, what we see from, from, this, uh, uh, from this regression. So this is a regression on the full sample and we just see you know, whether they mention civilian victims. So in other words, of course, per, for each Israeli, Twitter helps uh, uh, US TV to talk about uh, civilian victims more, however, on average, there are nine times more casualties on the Palestinian side compared to the Israeli side. Thus, on average, in any given time period, additional TV coverage of conflict due to the absence of these block blackouts on Twitter uh, is devoted to covering Palestinian civilian victims almost four times more than the Israeli victims, despite the fact that you know, Twitter helps covering each uh, separate Israeli, uh, Israeli casualty more than Palestinian casualty. So overall, so if you look at the uh, balance of, uh, of power in this conflict, we could, con we could con uh, conclude that Twitter moves uh, this traditional media reporting towards portraying the side of conflict which suffers higher civilian death toll. And this, you could argue, highlights a democratizing role of, of social media because people who otherwise don't have a voice suddenly uh, tend to, to tend to be heard more. You can interpret these findings this way. So overall, let me just wrap up uh, reminding you our findings. Uh, we find systematic evidence and social media changes reporting by traditional media. The flow of tweets released from the conflict zone increases the extent of US TV coverage of the conflict. And what's more important for us, and we think that this is our main contribution, it changes the content and the tonality of news. Let me stop here and let's have a discussion. Thank you for listening. Thanks so much, um, Katya, for the wonderful talk. Uh, super interesting. Um, so, so maybe let's do the following. There are two more questions on the chat that, that I, I may uh, just um, kind of summarize to you. And then maybe from now on, uh, if other people have questions, please ask them just by raising their hand directly orally. So, uh, so that I don't uh, translate uh, all the time everything. OK, so um, uh, one question was like, um, what about different time periods? If you split the sample in different periods, maybe people would care more uh, about Twitter in the early Twitter days. And can we also distinguish between true and fake Twitter reporting? That was a question. And then another one. Um, so could it be that bad weather uh, is negatively correlated um, with, with attacks? So, you know, if there's a lightning, maybe you cannot easily attack. And uh, there are weather forecasts, so, so maybe, uh, what could happen is that the Israeli uh, 
army, for example, would plan attacks uh, uh, depending on weather forecast a bit, as if you, you know, related to your uh, other paper with Ruben on uh, attack when the world is not watching, right? Uh, so, so, um, so which would mean that maybe you want to control for weather variables. So that, that was the second question in the chat. Yeah. Dominique, uh, yes. shall, shall, I, shall we, uh, given that this is discussion time, we can do it one by one. We don't need to, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so we, we, I, we can return to this. So let me just uh, react to these uh, three questions. All, all of them are great. So as far as time period is concerned, uh, uh, there are two uh, conflicting uh, forces, let's say. On the one hand, there is more variation in the later period, but on the other hand, there is uh, also, uh, sort of uh, people get used to to this media more just as you as you uh, uh, mentioned so overall we find the facts more on the later uh, period and I think it's partly because there is more variation the high, the effects are higher in the later period and uh, indeed it is true that Twitter has been developing particularly fast after about 2013. At the same time, we do have uh, eff effects overall. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I will, I, I'm able to interpret the reason why, apart from the fact that, you know, there's, there is more variation. So on the, fi on, on the question of true false, I, uh, we are not able to do this. We, 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 you know, the, we of course know a lot about what's happening on the ground from this Bethlehem data, but not nearly as much to be able to really link the, uh, the tweets and the, the uh, coverage so far to the exact events because there's something going on all the time. So I think in principle, what could think about doing this by focusing on the very, very large US, uh, Israeli operations. Uh, we haven't done it yet, and we might uh, uh, be able to do this. Then we will we'll, we'll probably have, the, have some bite on this. But overall, uh, I think it's much, it will be much easier to think about these uh, true false uh, stories and the effect of them on Twitter uh, uh, if we collect more data potentially, because nowadays Twitter changed their policy and they, they actually uh, uh, show, indicate the tweets which are uh, likely to be false. And uh, for, for our period, uh, that did not uh, exist and we so far cannot do this. So uh, another question was on identification about the weather. So we do control for speed wind, uh, wind speed, and with, uh, for the rain. Uh, these are, of course, important. Uh, as far as lightnings are concerned, uh, uh, I doubt that uh, US or Israeli attacks could be affected by lightnings. But what, what could be affected by lightnings, I think, is, for example, coordination of attacks by Palestinians on Israelis. So we can imagine that situation that some of this coordination could happen through social media. However, first of all, we don't find any correlations on observables, but of course observables are not everything. But then the second, what we can say is that given that we can be relatively uh, sure that uh, control, uh, given our controls, the additional lightnings would not affect the possible ability of Israelis to attack at least you know, our results as concerned uh, with uh, the interaction between Twitter and Palestinian casualties should be, should be okay. But this is a good question. We'll think about that more. Yeah. So there's three more uh, oral maybe, questions by, uh, maybe let's start with, with uh, Clemence, uh, uh, Tricot, Trico, and then there's Ruben and QA. Okay, so uh, uh, Clemence, the floor is yours. Hi, thanks. Uh, hi, Katya. Uh, thanks a lot for the for the presentation. Um, so, following on the like video uh, question, so I find it super interesting to know whether they are directly reusing the actual Twitter content because it would speak also to the mechanism. Like, is it why they are covering it more because it's more salient for the U.S. public, or because they have new content uh, they can actually use? And so I was wondering whether you could uh, maybe look at the scripts and see and the transcripts you have and see whether they tend uh, to allude to a place where a video was taken 
or if, even like the name of the people inside the video, because usually when people would post, you know, a video on, on Twitter, they would say like the name of the town or the location or the people involved. So that that might be an easiest way to see whether they tend to reuse rather than, you know, hand coding the, the video themselves. Thank That's you. an excellent uh, point. And we have not uh, done it so far, but we'll try more. In fact, uh, uh, sort of our understanding is that uh, the, partly the reason why we weren't able to see this is that uh, essentially our prior is that Twitter makes the broadcast more diverse. So, so in, 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 in other words, it's much harder for machine uh, to detect any themes when the, the themes are fewer. So when, when, there, are, when there is no Twitter, then the, all the US uh, journalists know what to say. They always use the right words and uh, they, they have the topics, but when there's, uh, you know, really content which comes from, from uh, Twitter, it's something new essentially, and maybe different every time. So we are still trying to figure out how to pick that up and we are working on it, but, but we definitely will try to do more as far as the names of the places and names of the people as well. But so far we have no results on this. Okay, last two questions, quick ones by uh, Ruben and QA, and then we have to wrap up. Great, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for great presentation. So my question was like, if, if there's any chance you can move one step forward and see the effect of this more emotional coverage, uh, do you have any kind of any data that uh, relates to donations to, for example, charities that support one of the, either of the two sides fighting or anything that uh, can show that it's more persuasive when it's more emotional? This is an excellent question. And so far, there is no way we can do this because our variation is day to day. So, uh, but ideally what, what, uh, what uh, we are thinking about, but so far we, are, we don't have uh, enough data to be able to do this. So we need to basically have both instruments and then the extent of the Twitter. So if we, if we were able to extend our instruments towards the time, well, for example, lightning and weather, towards the time when there was no Twitter, uh, then we, we could do the triple difference interaction, something like this. Then, then we might be able to do this. But of course, we are interested in, in the question which you're asking. The problem is that, of course, these kind of things are not done immediately on that same day. And we, won't, we probably wouldn't have any data on this same day. What, we, what now I'm thinking about is, is that, and what we haven't done and we probably should, we definitely can look at the Google searches. We haven't done that yet. And I, your question makes me think that it's a good idea to do this. Maybe people search for, for charities, for example, that would not be exactly donations, but it would be already something. So I will try to, uh, to see if we can do something like this. It's an excellent suggestion. QA, hi, good to see you too. Hi, good to see all of you, in fact. It's really, really <laughs> nice. Uh, th thanks for the great presentation. And it's uh, yet another amazing project. In the mechanism that we're talking about, if we replace Twitter by, say, Facebook or Instagram, or just internet access uh, to you know people on the field, either, so, so they could be the, the locals, but they could also be, reporters who are working on the field, um, then, then it means that there could be other channels through which uh, the reduced form effect takes place. And so I don't know how much we could say that this is Twitter or this is uh, social media in general or, or just internet access. So, so uh, I don't know how. Yeah, it's, it's it. absolutely, uh, it's a good point. And maybe I haven't been uh, uh, clear about it. We are not, uh, trying to differentiate between different uh, uh, different activities on the internet as far as the uh, uh, as far as the uh, journalists are concerned we are sure that journalists when they are in the field have their satellite phones at the minimum they may also have the equipment to have a satellite internet, but this, they certainly have satellite phones when they get out in the conflict zone. So they are certainly not affected by, by uh, the, um, uh, by, by the uh, instrument. Uh, 
uh, looking at. However, as uh, other ways in which you would uh, um, uh, use uh, internet in order to post some information about the conflict, you are absolutely right that it could be uh, other social media platforms. But as far as uh, that, uh, I guess uh, it would be unlikely that there is uh, some other way in which you would use internet other than some other mechanisms as, well, as far as internet use is concerned, I would like to hear about them. But uh, we are certainly pretty clear that it's, it's not about journalists. And we talked to, to some journalists who were working in the conflict zone and we were asking them, do they, do they often have uh, internet outages and stuff? They, they laughed at us. <laughs> they, they're basically connected all the time. They have all the technology to be connected. So that's, uh, uh, that's their business. So in that sense, uh, we're pretty confident that this is about social media, but whether it's uh, Facebook or Twitter, you know, we cannot separate between the two. Of course, the uh, internet would, or the, the um, instrument would affect connectivity to internet in general. Uh, however, we do know from, from, uh, inter, uh, from surveys, for example, that uh, uh, Facebook is used much less by, by uh, journalists. However, what's important is that, of course, we're talking about TV coverage here, and therefore, uh, you know, one other very important uh, social media, which is clearly used by journalists, and I actually showed you an example of that in the beginning, is YouTube. So YouTube streaming may be used, uh, you know, YouTube videos may be used in the broadcasts. And of course, we don't separate between the you are, you, it's a good point, but it's a, for us, it's a point of framing rather than anything else. Oh, okay, uh, this brings us to the end of this uh, wonderful presentation. Thanks so much, Katya. And so thanks a lot to everybody for attending. Uh, the next uh, edition will be uh, 2nd of December with Maria Petrova. Okay, thanks so much.